Kelly Hoppen is one of Britain's leading interior designers. Kelly's got a really unique style. It's very simple but very tasteful. I'd love to get myself a Kelly Hoppen house. She is a phenomenon. Kelly has been designing interiors for over 30 years and in that time she's successfully created stylish homes and businesses for some of the most glamorous and demanding people in the world. When I design a room, I really want it to reflect the personality of the people living in it. Good taste is a room you feel comfortable in. But now she wants to use her expertise to fix bad taste and design disasters all across the UK. Not everyone has taste, that's for sure. But I want to show people that good design can be achieved with a very small budget. And when you get it right, it can actually improve your life. Tonight, Kelly meets an overzealous hop and wannabe and tries to reinvent a living room that's outlived its purpose. Holy moly. Oh, my word. Uh, Look at my floor. It looks terrible. And I'm stuck with it. I know what needs to be done, but how's it all going to get done? <laughs> I'm a bit speechless. Really not loving the Ottoman, but Kelly insisted that's yeah. what I should have. Hoppen's mission is to tackle bad taste and improve interiors all over the world. I want to change the way we live today with some simple golden rules anyone can use. When Kelly creates a room, she thinks as much about the people who live there as the look they want to achieve. This week she's taking on a multifunctional living room in Hertfordshire that the family have grown out of. Lisa and Simon Sharp are looking to redesign their breakfast come family room overlooking the garden. It's the hub of our home, so we eat in there, we entertain in there, and everything happens in that room. And we still want it to be all of those things, but we've grown out of that room how it was. So the Sharps want a modern, large, multifunctional space with a TV zone for the whole family, including their two kids, Max and Lauren. They also want a hot desk for Simon, who worked from home as a stock market trader, and an eating and entertaining area. Mum Lisa, who runs a headhunting business, rather fancies okay. herself as a hopper in the making. I love doing my home up. It's a real creative side of me that comes out. I've helped quite a few of my friends with colours and ideas. One of my friends calls me um, little baby Kelly Hoppen. I've always wanted to have a Kelly Hoppen room. She's a great inspiration. And I think that if you look at our house, it's not out of sync with what she does. So I think it's just gonna, it's gonna work amazingly. Kelly's got a successful design formula for open plan rooms. When you approach a multifunctional space, you have to think about what are all the elements that you want. So it could be that you want a place to eat, it could be a place to watch television for kids to do homework, or even a workplace. What's important is to make sure that all of these elements actually flow, so that when you walk into a space, you're not seeing the table, the chairs, the workplace, the sofas, that the whole thing just feels natural. That's really the key to good design. The Sharp family are out this morning, so Kelly's got a chance to have a look round their Hertfordshire home on her own. But will Kelly notice her influence on Lisa's interior design? Holy moly. Oh my word, this is very purple. You've got it on the chairs, the crystals are purple. But this, I love this. <laughs> is my absolute favourite. And upstairs, there's a different obsession. Wow! Crystal, 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 crystal. I think the pattern that I'm seeing in this house is overkill. And what will Kelly make of the room she's going to be tackling? definitely needs some help. 
One of the things that they want to do is knock this through, get rid of this wall. So obviously they would have much, much more room because at the moment this room is sort of like an office. It's a kind of nothing room and it would be much better to have, wow, big space going from back to front. There's a cushion licking my foot. <laughs> He's not purple. Kelly's starting to understand where Lisa and Simon have been going wrong. They are very interior designed, if that's you know, a good way to describe it. They clearly love doing stuff to their home, but the accessories and the things that they're putting in, it's a little bit too contrived. A lot of Buddhas, oh my God, I've just noticed crystals again. Doesn't go, doesn't go at all. The Sharps have a relatively small budget of £10,000 and the project is scheduled to take four weeks as they want the room finished in time for Simon's birthday. Kelly always gets to know her clients before starting work and she's about to meet her number one fan. Hello. Hi. How Hello. are you? I'm fine. Yourself? I'm all right, thank you. You're crazy about Buddhas. Oh, I am a bit too crazy. I've counted crazy. about 20. And what's with all the purple? I don't know, I just love purple. Very impulsive. Like. Impulsive spender. Yeah. Yes. How do you feel about that? Well, I've no choice. It comes home, it's <laughs> bought, it's paid for, it's going somewhere until yeah. she's fed up with it and then it gets moved. <laughs> Before putting pen to paper, Kelly needs to know exactly how this room's going to be used. What is this room going to be? A massive entertaining room. Yeah. Everyone sort of hangs out in here and it just doesn't feel like a... What do you want it to have? Do you want it to have a table and chairs? Yeah. Do you want yep. it to have sofas? Yeah. So yep. that kind of... Yeah, thing. it's, yeah. More, it's more an entertaining room. room. Yeah. At the moment, if we have, I don't know, six or eight people round, we're stuck with this room. We and can't we, all sit here and watch TV. Yeah. And this area, are we keeping that in? Yeah, I mean, look, yeah. it is. I you think, built it. What do you I think, think so. though? I'm not crazy about the grey in here. I don't okay. think it works, to be honest. It's a very elephant grey. It's the wrong... Tone. Grey's obviously Lisa's latest thing because you've got the grey, well you've got a grey throw there, you've got grey cushions. So all of this turned up in the last six months. Uh-oh. We're thinking about some lighting. There. We're definitely going to do lighting. lighting. See, Low level lighting. Before you sort of, sort of put a dampener on my purple, I sort of visualise, oh I thought, oh that could all be lit up purple. No, we're not doing that. <laughs> no, I know, no, I know, okay. I know. Let's just I'm get with this it. Clear. Um, That's your dark purple room. I know what you want to achieve here. You've got to find a balance here. We have to. You have to let me do that. Yeah, absolutely. Because I've got to put my name to it, and I know what I'm doing, and I know I can guide you in the right way. Please, let's leave the oh, purple no, no, the crystals. I'm, the purple's it's, gone. It's gone. All right. It's out of my mind. There's a lot of things in there that are wrong in the house, but I am so not going to have crystals, purple, Buddhas. There's so much of everything, but their intention is good, so I'm sure that we'll work well together, I hope. Being told, actually, this doesn't work and that doesn't work, and certain things that you think are nice and work, all of a sudden you find out they don't by an expert. It's an eye-opener, and I'm just um, adapting, shall I say. Coming up... Kelly unlocks her style secrets to creating a multifunctional space. Not only is the fabric important, the height of the furniture, then the lighting is what sets the whole thing off. And Kelly's forced to crack the whip. I know what needs to be done, but how's it all going to get done? <laughs> I'm a bit speechless. Kelly's mission this week is to reinvent the living room that the Sharp family have grown out of with a budget of £10,000. Back at Hoppen HQ, she's discussing design ideas for Lisa and Simon's multifunctional space with one of her team. Just come back from the Sharps, and I think once they break down this wall, it's going to be a really great room. For me, what's fantastic about this is the view out to the garden, and I don't think that they've used it to its advantage at all. I mean, we've got to keep the table that they've got with the chairs and the bonquette. They want a space that they can use for computers, but it's basically a room to watch television and be multifunctional. But what I'm worried about is that they've got access going into the dining room, access going into the kitchen. I don't want it to look like you're always walking around furniture. 
In order to save money, the Sharps want to keep their existing stone flooring. The only issue that I've got is the floor. They're going to have to now replicate in this area what they had here. And I'm hoping that it's not going to stand out too much, but walking around her home, she's got this excess of Buddhas. Everything's purple, loads of Swarovski crystals. And so what I'm trying to do with her is to do something that's kind of glitzy, but it's slightly more pared down and to balance it out really well. Leaving her team hard at work on the concept, the next step in Kelly's design process is to give the Sharps some inspiration and let them into a few of her design secrets. So she's taking them to the first class lounge at Terminal 5. The reason I brought you here is it's a multifunctional space because I know that we have to make your room into eating, living, yeah. chilling, kids. You've got to work in your space. And there are lots of different aspects here which I think will be quite interesting for you to see. Kelly's first rule for multifunctional space is to choose furniture of varying heights and textures to zone the room without losing the sense of space. Yeah. Otherwise, it's just one big space. Yeah, definitely. And I think, it, you know, this kind of shows you how you can do it. You've got a bar, you've got a seating area, you've got the glass, and then you look to see the planes taking off. I see exactly what you mean, because our aspect is the garden. It's and so we have the low, you know, we want a low-level sofa and the room to yeah. just flow. One of the trickier areas in Lisa and Simon's multifunctional room is the workspace that Simon's after. Your space, where we have to actually have an office, is very small. But what we can try and find is a unit that kind of opens and closes or maybe something goes away. Watch this. Very good. Very nifty. Clever, isn't it? Yeah. It is clever. But you're not actually having one of these. But it's the, the whole concept of actually hiding something and not having it in show. We're going to try and find something that you can use that when you hide it, it feels like you're going to the office and leaving the office. That sounds like a good idea. One of the most important things in your room is lighting. Yes. I know you love bling, crystals, chandeliers. I would love this. To have something over your table, really important, but you can still use crystal as stand-up lights as well. So I want to sort of create a balance in your home. So not only is the fabric important, the height of the furniture, then the lighting is what actually kind of sets the whole thing off. I love crystal, but I think you can have too much crystal. A week after her initial meeting with the Sharps, Kelly heads back to their Hadley Wood home, armed with her unique concept for their multifunctional living space. And she's collected a few of Lisa's old friends together. Oh, all just together to show just to show how many you've got. Yes. It's not that I don't want you to have them. I love Buddhas. They're so much a part of what I do in my design, but I just want to filter them a little bit. But anyway, let's look at what we're here for, which is the room next door. Kelly's master plan for rebuilding Lisa and Simon's living room has been designed around the family's needs. The wall between the existing lounge and study will be knocked down, opening up the space to create a massive open plan living, working, dining room. The Barcelona sofa, dining table and banquette will stay, but the chairs and cushions will be re-upholstered. Kelly's creating a workstation for Simon tucked into a small corner of the room. The old leather sofa is going to be replaced with a coffee table and large corner sofa with ottoman. And to add that extra wow factor, Kelly's designed a feature wall of black glass to hang the TV on. So how does the layout look before we look at what I've brought to show you? Yeah, I think the layout looks good. Yeah. Okay, so should we lift this? Da, 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 da. Kelly's layout seems to have got the sharp stamp of approval, so she moves on to the design nitty gritty. Okay, instead of using purple, mm -hmm. I want to try and bring in some other bright colours. And because you've got this incredible garden with the blue pool, I've chosen a really nice accent colour of the green yeah. with a kind of silver velvet and then bringing in this shot velvet, which is kind of blue, but it's also got green depending on the light. Kelly has pulled together contrasting textures to soften the hardness of the existing stone floor. Crushed velvet cushions, silver leather for the dining chairs, and foil curtains. The idea is to have a sheer curtain so you still see through the window. So if mm -hmm. you look behind, you can see. Yeah. yeah. 
but fantastic. I love it all. I really do. I'm really pleased. I'm so pleased. God, thank God for that. <laughs> But there's one thing they're not too sure about. This is your sofa. What do you, you think of the sofa? Um, I'm not wild on it. But I think in the design as well, you had the sofa at the side when the TV's on the back wall. And that sort of becomes quite awkward watching the TV to the side of you with, an, with your neck ache, etc. It can turn. You know, we'll put it on a pivot, yeah. the television. Yeah, I mean, that is always going to be a problem because that's the only place that you can have the television. One of the other reasons by having this with the arm is that if you've got guests here, that's one seating area. You could bring these chairs over and people can sit here and talk yeah, there. So, so I've created sure. two yeah. areas. The look of the sofa, I'm not sure. What do you think? We can look at other options of sofas as well. Interesting. Ultimately, if, if the fabric and the colour suits the room and the sofa's comfortable to sit on, it's good enough for me. Famous last words. Definitely warmed more to Kelly today and, and feel a lot more comfortable and happier and relieved and to sort of this weight lifted that she actually knows what she's doing and she's actually quite a good interior designer. <laughs> I think I totally got them, but I'm going to have to be really careful because I can see her going off on one of her shopping sprees. Once she loves something, she buys 10, 15, 20 of them. So with my 30 years of experience and her compulsive shopping, I think that's going to be the tug of war, but I'm sure I can manage it. I've just got to keep a really close eye on her. It's the first day of the shop's four-week schedule. I'll keep you informed. Lisa and Pooch Moisha are off to work, leaving laid-back Simon to project manage the build. She left me in charge, so uh, I haven't got her in my ear. Um, we should be able to crack on with it and get it done quite quickly. And his team of builders are wasting no time knocking down the wall. Five hours later and the wall is down. But the real test of success in this project is if wannabe designer Lisa is impressed. Wow. Good, huh? Yeah. Big. Yeah. Looks fab, doesn't it? It looks like it should have always been like this. The one thing that Kelly and the shark still disagree about is the sofa. Kelly's worried about what Lisa might choose, so she's taking them shopping to try and steer them away from anything too OTT. Oh, see, this is so comfortable. I love this. I have to stand my ground here. I know what's going to look good in that room, and I think that this sort of sofa is too high. When you walk into the room, it's, it's not going to be right. You're just It's going to be like a wall, and frankly, we're taking the wall down. This is the shape that I thought was great because it works as a double ottoman. If you have a party, it works as another area. Personally, I don't lo I don't, I'm not loving not the colour or the texture. So that's another thumbs down. This is much more comfortable. I think it's too shallow. I, feel, I find it a bit... When it comes to sofas, these are two tricky customers. That's really nice and deep. I don't like the fabric. Possibly. I wasn't mad when all the cushions but it looks messy, like, you know, rather than it being a set sofa. Come on, then. The hunt for the perfect sofa continues. This is like you're in first class and we're in economy. <laughs> There's not a single sofa on the high street that fits the Sharp's exact requirements, so Kelly's got a high-end solution. We haven't found one sofa that we like that feels comfortable, that's soft enough, that's in the budget that we want to spend. So I think, really, we need to get it made. Yeah. have decided to save money by keeping their 10-year-old stone floor in the hope they can find floor tiles to match for the newly opened up section. So, Simon has returned to the shop where he bought the original stone from to see what he can find. This is tumbled edges. I don't have these edges. They're straight cut. This section here, just those four stones would sit better yes. if it were straight cut. But it's not proving as simple as Simon thought. They don't have what we bought ten years ago. And whether we can cobble something together to make it look like it, I don't know. I thought this part was going to be quite easy. But it's going to cause a problem, I can see it. 
We've got samples, it's not exact, but we'll manage to hopefully create something out of what they've got to give us the same effect. So we'll take these away and see what happens. It's now the second week of the Sharps four-week schedule and Kelly has returned to their Hertfordshire home to check up on their progress. Whoa, look at this. So it looks great now. That is big okay. difference. Massive difference. Right, huh? isn't it? So I actually measured it. It was 40 foot from there into the oh, really? kitchen. Yeah. So where are we with the sofa? So as you can see, now, now we've got the space, it's sort of, you know, the sofa that you sort of said for us to get, and the sofa being over there, I, I, I don't know if you'd agree, but I think it's just going to be too much with a coffee table and everything else. Not content with the seating layout Kelly had proposed, Baby Hop and Lisa have come up with a design all of her own and found someone who'll custom make a sofa to fit. In this guy, he bespokes furniture and the sofa we've had in mind, and it's going to be very much a corner sofa rather than the ottoman. And okay. the reason I hope you don't mind, the reason is because it is a TV it's room. Yeah, I think I'll feel more secure once I've seen it. Yeah, we choose the, the fabric that you're happy with, but that it works with everything else that we've done, and then we can look at the whole idea of the ottoman with or having the back and, and the arm. And Simon's got yet another issue with Kelly's design. Curtains. Yes. Extremely expensive. The fabric's expensive. Really expensive. Yeah. I mean, that has pushed the budget well over. It's sort of making us think, do we actually, let's just love them and... Well, I'll tell you what, I'm absolutely convinced that you need the curtains. Let me have the challenge to find you a fabric that is a lot, lot less money it will actually finish the room off. It will finish you off. Correct. It will finish me off completely. And the Sharps have one final bombshell for Kelly. Um, so, just to let you know as well, Lisa and I are going away next week. We're going on a quick trip to Marbella. Who's going to run the project then? We're well, going to have to get the plumber in this week to lay the pipes so that Tyler can come and lay the floor. The electrician needs to come because I can't get the room decorated until the electrician's come, made all these holes in the I know what ceiling. needs to be done, but how's it all going to get done? <laughs> I'm a bit speechless. I would advise doing a programme and that everyone sticks to it so that when you're in Marbella, you can call up and say, has this been done? Has, you know, somebody's got to be accountable for doing all the work here. I agree. And it's probably the worst week you could go away in this entire project. It's a disaster that they're going away for. There's no other way to describe it. It is probably the five days that needs to have somebody on the job more than anything. I've still got to see the sofa. I'm a little bit concerned because I don't know who this guy is. They've pulled it out of nowhere. So I've suddenly got no control over it. So I'm just praying that it's going to be okay. Coming up, the Sharps pay the price for taking their eye off the ball. Look at my noise, it's terrible. And I'm stuck with it. And the project hasn't gone quite as they thought. It has cost us a bit more than we expected. It's taken a lot longer than we expected. And it's been a little bit more stressful than we expected. Now here's your chance to transform your home and win some home appliances to be really proud of. We're giving one lucky viewer the chance to win and choose up to £10,000 worth of Siemens home appliances. For a chance to glam up your home, all you have to do to enter is call 0904 161 9955 or text HOME to 81555 or post your name and phone number to HOME 1 PO Box 7557 Derby DE 10 NP. Calls cost £1.53 from a BT landline. Calls from other networks may vary and from mobiles will cost considerably more. Text costs £1.50 plus one message at standard network rate. Lines close at midday on the date shown on screen and three days later for postal entries. For rules and winners, go to channel5.com slash win. got £10,000 to help Hop and Wannabe Lisa and her husband Simon reinvent their tired living room. They're halfway through their four-week schedule and after Simon's concerns about the budget, Kelly's brought them to a specialist haberdashery to find cheaper curtain fabric. 
It's really important to get this right because the windows are so crucial because you're looking out onto your garden, so we need to frame it well. So these fabrics, I think, will do the trick. What we want is some form of a dress curtain that's soft, that just kind of blows in the wind. What I also brought was maybe some satin, so one could maybe do a tie or something that falls on the side of it. It's going to give you that glitz that I know that you want. What do you think of something like that? I'm not loving that initially, but... The other alternative is to use something like this, which is, I love this. It yeah. gives that more sort of creased, linen-y yeah. look. Again, we could also bring in the satin, which I love the fact that the satin mixes in with something like this. I think I prefer that see-through look. I like it with the satin. But I also think this is really lovely. Do you? Yeah. You're not mad on that, are you? I don't know, your granny's nighty. Something it reminds me, yeah. I can't quite put my finger on it. I think the contrast of that with that's very nice. Yeah, you like I don't the know if paler ones. With that and that. Not really my um, field of expertise, curtains. All right, well then, you stay out of it and we'll yeah. do it. <laughs> Things like this, I think I'm going to get a bit... Um, I'm just going to get a bit fed up of looking at it. I'm not big on that at no. all. OK, well then, just forget but that. that. that sort of is well, this simple, it's more simple. I, I, I'm really thrilled. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, good. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I didn't think you were going to go for that. No, that to me is so I think much that nicer. That contrast, lovely. Yeah. So I take it this is the more expensive. Yeah, but we need so we need little of that. that. Yeah. So this one, 750 a metre. We like that. Have I got a result for you? You have Sounds got a result. Good. Okay. So they're going for the cheaper muslin for the main curtain fabric with the more expensive satin to add luxurious trims. I have an eye for things that I like and the nice thing is, is that this face, she didn't pull out that many fabrics and for us to like what she chose. I think it's cri she's read us and she knows what we like, which is brilliant. And I'm pleased that she's really pleased that we like what she likes. Back in Hadley Wood, work is progressing. The plumbers are in to chase the pipes for a new radiator and the floor's being prepped. Meanwhile, the Sharps and Kelly are off to the factory where Lisa's bespoke sofa is being created. <laughs> Kelly wants to inspect the design that Lisa has come up with to see if it will fit into her overall scheme. What we had originally done was to have a sofa that then had an ottoman at the end. Yes. You know, so it's whether or not you want to stop the sofa here and have this as an end piece. Kelly wants them to go for a sofa with an adjoining ottoman to create an L-shaped arrangement which won't break up the room. This is kind of where the other door is going out to the garden. If you've got an ottoman there, you've got another area here. I think for us it was, we were sort of not really leaning towards the ottoman were we? That's one of the reasons we wanted to get the arm because it was more important to us for uh, have the seating area facing the TV. Do you get what you're saying? Because it does cut that room off and it does sort of but separate that, But that's it. what the room, you know, the problem is you had two things. One was it was a room to watch television. You're eating in the kitchen, but you also want to have parties there. Yes. This will cut off the room. Oh, no. You know, whether or not we don't have this, just the arm. Well, we could give them an example. Oh, here we, we go. Take oh. the arm away. See, I'm much better. Yeah. I mean, if it was me, I would have it without the arm. The, the idea of sitting at the end yeah. with some... Uh, yeah, because you do. You sort of squidge into the end and it's more comfortable. And that's why we were leaning towards no ottoman and it being more of a functional they'd sofa go, for watching TV. They'd go for TV. it as an L-shaped sofa with two ends. It is different to what I had originally designed and I still think the other way would have worked, but you're happy with it. I can see you're happy. You've got a big smile on your face. I was worried, I was, because it's, you know, it's a big thing, the sofa, it's the main part of the room. It's still going to be a problem that it is going to cut the room in half, 100%. Having that arm there is going to be an issue, but at the end of the day, the client has to be happy. I'm not actually going to be physically living there. Despite being the crucial week of the build, the Sharps are about to jet off on holiday. Come on, get in. I'll pack you. But before they go, Simon's heeding Kelly's advice to draw up a schedule of works for their builder. Perfect. Thanks, mate. By the time they return, the floor should be laid, the electrics for the high-tech lighting scheme should be fitted, and the decorating should be underway. But they seem unconcerned. I think I'm quite happy to be going away this week. I think we need a break from it all. Yeah, it'll be good, and we know everything's sort of taken care of, so... Uh... There's not that much going on this week that we've got to worry about.
the Sharps have opted to increase their budget to go for a knockout lighting scheme, which Kelly believes is a key component to every stylish home. It is make or break with lighting. I mean, if you get wrong lighting, it makes a room look really dull. But also, if you get it right, you can have several different tones of lighting. So you can have night lighting, day lighting, breakfast lighting. It kind of creates the mood. And lighting is all about mood. Here's a perfect example of actual practical lighting, because this is where you chop and bake and do all those things that I just love doing in a kitchen. Or you've got up here, which is more the ambient light, or better still, for me, low-level lighting. So you could actually have no lighting on anywhere, but just low-level at night, and it just looks fantastic. So this is where I have fun. This is all about sort of show-off lighting, but they're also practical. What hanging lights do anywhere in the, in the home is basically bring everyone together because suddenly you've got low-level lighting. So it's a place where people tend to hang around or they sit around a dining table or something. So this is what this is doing here. It's now the third week of their four-week schedule, and the Sharps are back from holiday. Their living room is due to be completed next week, but the flooring hasn't been touched, and the painting hasn't been started. The electricians have fitted the wiring for the high-tech lighting system, but now the ceiling needs to be skimmed. I came in expecting, you know, at least a floor to be laid so the decorator can't do anything and even if the floor was laid, the paint never turned up. Going away was nice and sort of relaxing and taking your mind off it all and then coming straight back in and it's like, right, problem, problem, problem. We are going to get the room done. It has cost us a bit more than we expected. Um, it's taken a lot longer than we expected and it's been a little bit more stressful than we expected. But overall, it's been great! <laughs> That's, that's got With so much still to do, it's clear they're never going to hit their deadline, so they've agreed to postpone Simon's party for two weeks. And Kelly's phoned them to find out what's going on. Hello. Hi. Um, so, Kelly, just an update of where we are. Yeah, what's been happening? I hear there was a bit of a disaster with the tiles. It was cutting the tiles into the existing pattern that was the problem. Right. Uh, and they didn't want to do anything until I got back and asked, you know, what my opinion was and the paint never turned up until today so the decorator couldn't have done anything anyway so actually us going away didn't matter because nothing got done anyway and the workstation is organized no that's another thing we haven't organized yet um we haven't decided which, which table we're going to go for, which desk, so... Um, we'll, you sure we'll, we'll you're not still that. in Marbella, lying by the pool? So I can assure you we're not. Bye. 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 I think they sound stressed. I think that whenever you come back from a holiday, it takes 30 seconds and the reality sets in. Something's not... Something's up. I can't figure out what. Two days later, the Sharps face another setback. Whilst Lisa and Simon are out, the tiler is busy laying their new floor. And as soon as they get back, they realise there's something wrong with the tiles they ordered. My floor is terrible, and I'm stuck with it. It's so obvious, it's a completely different floor. It doesn't even slightly merge in. That's really, really disappointing. The tiler has laid the tiles as instructed, but neither Lisa nor Simon had spotted that the tiles they ordered had tumbled edges. And when I originally spoke to the guys, I told them that I didn't want the brushed or tumbled edge. It was one thing I specifically stated, and all of these tiles have a brushed or tumbled edge. The edges of the tiles do not match my existing ones. This rubbish. And one tumbled edge against another tumbled edge just doubles the size of it. You've then got grout in there, which makes it even bigger. Simon's determined to have it out with the suppliers, who he thinks have sold him the wrong tiles. I want straight edge, and I'm now looking at tumbled edges. And th this is where we're coming across the problem, that I've sp specifically told you that my existing tiles are straight edge. How can I butt up against it um, tumbled edges? I'm stuck with a floor that I don't want. I'm stuck with a floor that doesn't match the existing floor. 
and, uh, and, and could you know, possibly sort of really ruin the room. The tile supplier said the sample taken by the Sharps had similar edge detail to the stone subsequently ordered and accepted. They would have exchanged the stone had the Sharps complained before it was laid. One week later, work is carrying on regardless. The decorators are cracking on and the Sparks have started installing the high-tech lighting system. And with only a week until the new deadline, Kelly's back eager to check on progress. Oh my God, it looks amazing. So it's looking good, isn't it? What a difference. I think you'll be amazed when the black glass goes up. It's yeah, going to completely good, change right? and it's going to give you the zhuzh that you want. But what about the problem floor? Kelly's got a brilliant idea to make the best of a bad situation. Hide it. This is going to be covered. You're yeah. not going to notice it. You really aren't. There's furniture going to be all around here. Luckily, we've got this great rug. Don't yeah. lose sleep over that. No, you know what it was? When we first walked in, it was like, oh my God, and it really yeah, did. that's the only thing you see. Mm. Yes. Kelly's eased the shop's concerns over the floor, but once again, they've been tinkering with her designs. Now they want to swap the coffee table for an ottoman. The ottoman we saw was fab, okay. so we just wanted to run it by you and see whether you think, you know, it's worth swapping moments like the this. ottoman. Some monster going to arrive here. <laughs> well, we want to show you the photos okay. first, and we've actually found fabric that we think matches beautifully. We thought we could have this covered in that. Okay, so answer your question, love the ottoman. No, no problem with the shape, it's great. I'm just wondering whether we should go for something more in the linen kind. I think though this is the same grey tone oh. as my sofa. I know, that's what, that that's what I'm worried about. That's what I'm worried about. I go light stuff? I don't know. I just want to balance it all. Yes. Yeah. Kelly is determined to have the final say on the fabric, but it seems there are still differences of opinion between the designer and her protégé. We have had to have some control of the reins, um, given that we're the ones that are living here and we're the ones that are paying for it. I think Lisa needs to utilise me. I'm here, I'm doing the job for her, and I think the original design absolutely worked. I just want to make sure that I keep an eye on things so that it really does look spectacular. The ottoman is key. It's got to be the right fabric. I'm not convinced about that one. In fact, I don't like it at all. We love the fabric we've come up with. We love that fabric. But actually, whatever she says I'll go with, I really think she's got a good eye on her. Fabric. But we're not overruling Kelly. I am completely sure that she's going to love it, so she's just got to trust me. Coming up, design diva Lisa just can't let go. I don't love it in the linen, which is a real shame, but it's Kelly insisted that's yeah. what I should have. And don't forget about the chance to glam up your home and win up to £10,000 worth of Siemens home appliances. All you have to do to enter is call 0904 161 9955 or text HOME to 81555. Or send your name and phone number to HOME1, PO Box 7557, Derby, DE1, 0 NP. For rules and winners, go to channel5.com slash win. It's the penultimate day of the Sharps living room project. They've gone over budget by 50% and with Simon's belated birthday party tomorrow, the pressure's on to get the room finished. First thing to be fitted is the statement black glass runner. And the Sharps eagerly anticipated bespoke sofa and ottoman are next to appear, but Lisa's enthusiasm seems to have waned. Everything looks too big. Sofa looks too big, chair looks too big, ottoman looks too big. A lot of furniture and not a lot of room. I really don't like that. I really don't like the ottoman. Everything's turned up at the same time. It's absolutely chaotic in there. Lisa's sort of panicking. She doesn't like sort of certain things. Too big, they're not right. I'm not loving the ottoman. I didn't want linen. Really not loving the ottoman. I just don't like the texture of it at all. I don't love it in the linen, which is a real shame, but it's Kelly insisted that's yeah. what I should have. I want it in this lovely snake skin. <laughs>
It's now the final day and Kelly's back. Lisa and Simon are out, so she's dressing the room and adding some hop and magic. Kelly has created a dramatic design which subtly incorporates Lisa's love of crystals, purple and even her buddhas. Just six weeks ago, this space was split into two ill-thought-out rooms, which the family had grown out of. Now Kelly's transformed it into an open-plan living, dining and workspace with a bespoke L-shaped sofa upholstered in smoky grey crushed velvet, surrounding an oversized ottoman in contrasting linen. So come on, guys. Looks amazing. I feel like I'm in a boutique hotel. It's absolutely stunning. I just absolutely love it. I'm really thrilled with the curtains. I'm so glad that we went with it because it doesn't block our no, day. No, it just kind of makes you a bit cosier and I think it looks amazing. They look incredible. I mean, you would never know how much they cost. At the far end of the room, Kelly's created a feature wall in black glass, which draws your eye and helps their supersized TV blend in. I love the TV, I love the glass, I just think well, that's that a looks great focal sensational. point when you kind of walk in to have that and you already had black, yeah. it's all about the sort of balance, so you've yeah. got to keep having the balance the whole time in a room. But, yeah, but it looks lovely, but doesn't it look like I've got a TV on no, there, that's so that's what so I like great. as well. And I've got to say, I admit it now, I really didn't want that linen. I'm just so happy that I bullied you into the yeah. linen. I can't, I, it just looks so right and that's why now I feel stupid. The dining area has retained the black granite table, but the chairs have been re-upholstered in eye-catching silver leather. I'll tell you what I love, that you've managed to find Terminal 5, those wonderful champagne chandeliers. Oh, yeah. I've now got my own balls of crystal over my dining but table. slightly right? smaller. Slightly smaller. <laughs> I love them. And Simon's got a stylish black gloss desk, which cleverly extends when he needs extra workspace. That's, that's genius, fantastic. actually. I think Absolutely that's great. Just fantastic. So. No, it's fab. And the whole room is brought to life by an incredible layered lighting scheme using crystal chandeliers, wall lights, spotlights, and crystal standard lamps. One of the things that I was really keen on was to have this area completely open. I wanted this part of it not to have a back so that you could sit and talk to people if they were here. But by having the ottoman, You've kind of got that. that. I won't change one thing in this room. Oh, that's so Not nice. one thing. The Sharps ended up going over budget and spending around £15,000, but they're both delighted with the results, even design diva Lisa. To have this Kelly Hoppen room, it's incredible. We're very, very lucky, incredibly grateful, and I don't think I could have ever in a million and one years, it doesn't matter how many design like books I'd have looked at, just got anything near to what I've, what I've got. As the birthday party gets underway, their family and friends are equally impressed. Oh my god, the transformation of this room. It just looks ten times bigger. The TV setting and the black glass, I think that's sensational really. It's not just lovely, it's stunning. Absolutely stunning, it's beautiful. A massive, massive, <laughs> massive. thank you to Kelly. Everything is beyond my expectations. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Kelly's design has certainly got the seal of approval from the Sharps, but it seems old habits die hard. I'm just a bit no, worried take it back. that no, there's good. now a new addiction, <laughs> elephants, because it's going. They're all over the place. <laughs> it's going, all right? It's there because it's to be taken back. <laughs> no more Buddhas, no more elephants, no more toots. I promise you. No, no, please don't. I promise. Until all right? Next week. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Kelly. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much. I am so happy with the result of the room for the Sharks, but it hasn't been the easiest of projects because I was really aware that Lisa wanted to be in control and I didn't want to step on her toes, but I needed to get her to see how she should try and design in the future. But the result is fantastic. I don't know how much has sunk in. I'm not sure that I'm going to actually be able to rein her in completely. Next week, Kelly tackles a tiny flat with a colour-crazy owner. What do you think of the colour? I hate it. I couldn't bear the thought of having cream carpet. That would be my idea of hell. They promised it on Saturday, they promised it on Monday, they promised it on Tuesday. We need to get this nipped in the bud. 
Well, hopefully these coppers have got slightly less to face than that with a new episode of Soho Blues tomorrow night here on Channel 5 at 9. Stay put, though, because next tonight it's new CSI Miami. Thank you.